In 2004, my daughter Abigail was born. This is her here. It was a long and difficult labour uh, for my life. It last, uh, for my wife, it lasted around, <laughs> around uh, 20 hours or more. It turned out Abigail was trying unsuccessfully to come out bottom first. She was a breech baby and nobody noticed. Towards the end of the labour, my wife was in uh, considerable pain and she swore uh, to express that pain. Uh, she swore uh, quite considerably, actually. Um, then the contractions eased and she was a little bit embarrassed at having been using that kind of language in a room full of medical professionals, only to redouble her efforts as the next wave of contractions uh, came along. During one of the remission phases, the midwife uh, came and said some words which were both comforting to my wife and to prove uh, to have a huge impact on my kind of professional life as a psychology researcher. The midwife said, don't be embarrassed. We hear that sort of language here all the time. Swearing, cussing is a completely normal and routine part of giving birth. Now, isn't that amazing? This kind of contrast between one of the most beautiful and profound acts that a human being can perform, giving birth to another human being, to an accompanying soundtrack of swearing, cussing, and all the rest of that sort of thing. So this was the starting point for me as a psychological scientist to start to think about swearing and think about maybe there are positive benefits to swearing, beginning with the question, does swearing help us to cope with pain? So I got back to my job at Keele University a few weeks later and just started to have a little dig around the psychology literature. Nobody had ever tried to link these topics before. So my students and I at the university began to research this area. So after a short while, we hit upon the idea of using ice cold water. It's great for pain research because it's painful, but not harmful. So we used a forerunner of the uh, charity Ice Bucket Challenge. We are, our, simple, our simple design was people put their hands in ice cold water, they repeat either a swear word or a neutral word of their choice, and we look to see how long they keep their hand in the water for. We've reliably shown across a couple of published papers and lots of other papers that people will keep their hands in the water for longer uh, and they'll rate it as less painful when they're repeating a swear word. We also show an increase in heart rate in the swearing condition, which seems to indicate that people are having an emotional response to the swearing. This sets off the body's fight or flight response, in turn setting off a, co a component of that known as stress-induced analgesia. So this is a naturally uh, occurring uh, pain relief uh, mechanism. Since our research uh, was published, a word has begun to appear in online dictionaries, lalochesia, the use of vulgar or foul language to relieve stress or pain, which seems to indicate acceptance of this kind of idea in the public sphere. There have also been a number of other psychologists and other scientists producing research looking at the positive benefits of swearing. And let me share a few of those with you now. So let's take honesty. The link between swearing and honesty could go either way. On the one hand, you might think somebody who swears a lot is the kind of person who transgresses moral and social codes and is kind of variously unreliable and likely to be a liar. On the other hand, you might say that swearing is a sign of uh, spontaneous speech and kind of speaking in an unfiltered way and so is linked with greater kind of honesty and openness. So what a great dilemma. Someone needs to do some research to try to get to the bottom of that. And indeed that has been done. Their opening question to their volunteers was this one. What is your favourite swear word? Does anyone here have a favourite swear word? Yeah, go on, share it. That was a good one. Mofo. <laughs> we probably all have favourite swear words, or at least words that we will use uh, uh, often in, in, in various situations. So these researchers asked people what their favourite swear words were and how often they used them to get a measure of swearing. Then they also had to come up with some way of measuring honesty. And they did this using a very simple measure. They asked people questions along the lines of, are all your habits good and desirable? Now, whereas your first response to a question like that is to say, well, yes, of course, uh, we're all human and probably nobody has a full set of uh, desirable um, habits. And so using questions like this, we can measure honesty. 
When they looked at the, the responses to the two sets of questions, something very interesting became apparent. The people who saw the most also responded with the most honesty, which indicates that the idea of swearing is more to do with unfiltered speech and spontaneity rather than moral transgression. So it's okay to drop the F-bomb every now and then because people will believe you and think that you're honest. Another study that I'm going to uh, share with you looks at, um, an, on a similar sort of lines, not honesty, but friendliness. This study was conducted by some psychologists in, of all places, a soap factory in New Zealand. So obviously, workers are the same the world over. They love to have a good whinge about their bosses or a good gossip about their co-workers. These researchers went on the factory floor of this soap factory and eavesdropped on conversations, made recordings of conversations. And amongst other things, they looked at the frequency of occurrence of swear words. It was a factory, swearing was very frequent. That's not the interesting finding. What was interesting was the pattern of swearing. They found that when workers were talking with co-workers in their team, who they'd known for a long time, a number of years, and worked together, Swearing was very frequent. It was good-natured, nobody got upset by it, but swearing was uh, very prevalent. However, when these individuals went and spoke with other people from the factory, even workers of equal status in the, uh, in the business, the swearing completely disappeared. So swearing here is almost a sign of solidarity between people that know each other well. It's like saying, I know you so well, we know each other so well, you're not going to be offended if I swear. And actually not swearing under those circumstances would have revealed something strange. So here, swearing is a kind of a solidarity, a way of displaying friendship. Uh, so yeah, so it's fine to drop the F-bomb because you want to be friendly with people. So if swearing does have all these benefits, you might wonder why people don't swear more often. Well, there are a number of reasons why. One thing that might lead to people holding back is the idea that swearing is somehow linked with uh, stupidity. There is a school of thought that swearing is a sign of low IQ and inarticulateness, no more, no less. People that swear just are too stupid to think of a, a more suitable word. Some psychologists, psychologists look beyond uh, this stereotype to understand swearing in more detail. So first of all, they wanted to get a good idea of people's general language ability. And they did this using a very simple test. How many words can you think of in one minute, beginning with the letter, let's say the letter S? So this is a very simple task. The more words people are able to produce, the better they're demonstrating their verbal abilities to be. But these psychologists came up with an amazing twist on this task, which I only wish I'd uh, thought of first. They came up with a swearing fluency task. How many swear words can you think of in one minute? When they compared the two sets of scores, again, they showed something remarkable. The people who had the best general vocabulary also had the best vocabulary of swear words, which suggests that there is more to swearing uh, than low IQ and inarticulateness. Swearing is a part of speech, a register that we can use, that we can reach for, when we want to express things in a certain way, be heard, uh, and so on. So listen, sometimes it's okay to drop the F-bomb. It can help you to cope with pain, it can make you sound more honest, it can be a sign of friendliness, and it won't make you sound stupid. So why don't we try an experiment here in this room? Why don't we explore the positive benefits of swearing together? So I asked you earlier, did you have a favorite swear word? You had a fantastic uh, response from the front. I want to think about that word. In a moment, together as a group, we're going to shout out the word and try and feel the benefit, okay? <laughs> Everyone sure what they're going to say? Okay, I think the moment has come. So shout out your words and let's feel the positive vibes. One, two, three. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> but I think we can do better. Think of that word, think of the times you've used it. It's helped you through pain, it's helped you through times of stress. Maybe it's, exp it's expressed great joy at some amazing 
event that's happened, okay? Get that word in your mind. Let's completely raise the roof of this venue. <laughs> One, two, three. Fantastic. Thank you very much.